Hi everyone, welcome back to the Psychedelic Art Exchange YouTube channel. We're happy to be back talking about an item in our latest auction, the part two of the April mega auction, although I know it's a little confusing because it's May now, will close tomorrow, May 2nd at nine o'clock p.m. Eastern time. And we have this amazing lead lot. We figured this is the only one that we really need to talk about this time around because it is so historical and important. This one is from a very important moment in music history. So let's take a look. Yeah, well, uh, you know, this is Bob Dylan. This is the story of Bob Dylan, early Bob Dylan, when he first arrived in New York. It is really one of the greatest chapters in his whole thing because he came from Minnesota, you know, like in late 59 and I think sat out on the road and maybe played you know, a, a few gigs and found his way to New York. And this was all tied up with, um, you know, the emerging folk scene in the in lower Manhattan at the time, which was tied to the beat movement and the the expression of new ideas. It was the baby boomers. It was, you know, the post-war kids and they had affluence and ideas and it changed the world. Mm -hmm. And music. I mean, so Dylan arrives in New York in 1960. He takes up with uh, Dave Van Ronk and, and starts becoming immersed in the folk scene in lower Manhattan. And he gets booked for a gig in September at Gertie's Folk City. For Gertie's Folk City was one of the numerous coffee house clubs, like, like the Gaslight and other historic places that come up, especially when you're discussing Dylan's legacy. So mm -hmm. he gets booked at Gertie's Folk City and this innocent looking handbill where he's not even, you know, he's, he's all the way down here, but they got it right. The sensational Bob Dylan. This was his breakout event. It was captured and reported on, reviewed in the New York Times on September 29th. And as they say, the rest is history. Yeah, this piece really was shocking that it came in. I, yeah, I know about the event. I know about this place in history. It's all beautifully um, captured in Dylan's autobiography, uh, Chronicles, Volume One, which anyone who's interested in Dylan, who, you know, I can't see why you wouldn't. He's one of the most interesting figures in not only music, but in popular culture. Um, and, you know, the whole timeline of Dylan, this could we could go on for an hour about this, but this is the beginning. And after this was a couple weeks later, he was uh, introduced to John Hammond, the, you know, the super influential producer. After that, had his first album and it went off from there. But this little, you know, kind of beat piece, I can't imagine you know, that this isn't, you know, at least a five figure piece. There were a couple mm -hmm. results that were astonishing low, astonishingly low when I looked at them, considering, you know, this is a document for an institution, in my opinion. This yeah. is the beginning of Dylan in the folk scene. And again, those familiar with his story understand that he went electric in 65 and changed the whole game, pissed off all of the folk PRS. And, and then he was never sitting on his laurels. He's had, you know, many shape shifting, uh, creative periods in his life. And he, but, and he's still on the road. Um, yeah, he's one of the most prolific guys of all time. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, you know, it's what, traveling Wilburys. Do we say anything more? The greatest <laughs> supergroup of all time. Oh, that's bold. <laughs> uh, all right, I mean, but also uh, true. Uh, it, you know, challenge me on it. We'll talk. Um, <laughs> uh, anyhow, so you know, this uh, this is um, y you know a, an unbelievably scarce and important piece. If you're a collector of deep esoteric 
material, not esoteric, but, you know, esoteric pieces. This is not a splashy, colorful Dylan poster. And it's funny in the world of Dylan posters, it, it seems that this early stuff has not quite gotten the impact of other artists of the era. I draw a parallel in the description to the Beatles because they mm-hmm. kind of were on the same ascending track and then had this, uh, you know, the John Lennon Dylan sort of, uh, you know, feud trying to outdo each other. It was it was a, a friendly feud, but that was rock and roll of the 60s. Uh, they, they, you know, those two <laughs> pushed the game forward more than, you know, many. I'll try not is- to... To it use is, absolutes. <laughs> it is true in this hobby that sometimes there are pieces that are, you know, artistically exciting and sometimes his more on the historical, like more historically exciting. And this one's definitely a little more like of a, you know, exciting historical piece rather than like a work of art, but it still looks really cool. Yeah, it, it gives me chills. It mm-hmm. is, it's just, it, it's just one of those those pieces that like the DNA from that room is still in there and you kind of can time travel through this, but you know, you make a a, a good point. People collect this material for various different reasons and there's nothing wrong with how anybody collects. But if you're into rare, if you're into important, if you're into, you know, something that there's not many opportunities to own, we're super, super proud to have this in our sale. It's sort of, you know, it's, it's, it's a big moment for us, in my opinion, maybe it's just because I'm, you know, a real, you know, fan of Dylan. I don't know how you cannot be if you're into rock and roll. I mean, even if you don't, you know, appreciate his performances, especially nowadays, because the arrangements can sometimes be strange, but, um, you know, it's Dylan. He is strange. He's always been strange. He came to New York. He, you know, he, again, fell into the beat scene. He hung out with Ginsburg. He idolized Kerouac, you know, read On the Road, just like everyone else at that era. And it was really, it was the, it was different than the San Francisco scene. It sort of, it it, it spurned this, it sort of helped birth the San Francisco ethic mm-hmm. in a way. And in fact, Wavy Gravy, Hume Romney was, a you know a poet that was playing in these same clubs at the time made his way cross country met ken kesey and then you know he's another one of those threads that runs through this history just like dylan so if you're if yeah if you're a fan of the history and want to know where this all came from bid on this piece yeah you might never have another opportunity um so definitely don't don't take this lightly don't pass it up Again, bidding is open until Thursday, May 2nd, 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. As always, the links are going to be in the description below. Thank you so much for tuning in today. We'll be back super soon with another video. Thanks again.